What's going on guys, welcome back to the channel. So in the last video, I set up the cyclic tank you can see behind me and I moved on my computer desk out the way. So yeah, many of you might remember my whole area here was my computer desk with the screen and everything. But now that it's out of the way, I shifted it there <laughs> and it's just been perfect there, except for the fact that it's not gonna be very good, is it? If I've got service tanks and things. So I'm thinking, why don't I just put it on wheels and put a reel, like an extension lead reel, the same as that one, on the side that's attached. And I can just reel it up and have it all plugged in and just go wherever I want with it. And then just plug it in wherever I want to. I can even have it in the other studio as well, or over in this corner, wherever. How cool would that be? So I actually had this idea whilst we were doing the previous build, and I already ordered the wheels. <laughs> so fit them, I guess. <laughs> Oh yes, it works. You want to come this way? Okay. You want to go that way? Okay. <laughs> also, I mean, it's quite narrow, so you don't want to be going too silly with it. I wouldn't want to ride it down a hill, put it that way, but you know, for what we need it for, awesome. And there we go, we got power as well. So a bit of a pointless upgrade, but you know, it was quick to do. And I cannot tell you, by shifting over here to do some work, it really sort of refreshed everything for me. Try it, if you're stuck in like a rut and you're doing the same things every day, move some stuff around, try like shifting it about. And I don't know, it just gave me a real sort of boost. <laughs> so not completely pointless, to be honest. <laughs> yes, yes, that's fantastic, isn't it? But what's that got to do with maintenance? Well. One of the things I struggle with is when I haven't got much room, it's hard to do things. That's why I make good gaps in height between tanks. Some people have like a little slot, can't be doing with that. So the, the fact is I can now swing everything out the way. I can get right to every single tank, including the Peninsula one, you know, the new one we set up, the cyclic tank. And that galley that goes down the back, hang on, let me show you. Yeah, so this whole section now can just be clear. I've put all my camera equipment on this bit, which will obviously not be there when I'm... Uh, <laughs> taking water out and everything. But yeah, everything, I've got so much more room, I can just spin, just, you know, it's great. Just moving everything wherever you want, perfect. So with that, the first tank that I wanna do some maintenance on is that one down there, the Crebensis tank. Now, I hadn't seen the female for about three weeks, and I did fear the worst, if I'm honest, but recently, she's come back out again. First batch of babies as well, they went off swimming on their own. Now, I think there's a good few left, I have seen them. Um, I can't see them at the moment, though. <laughs> I mean, just look at it. It's looking, well, you can't even see it. There's not a lot of point in talking about it at the moment. Let me just get all of this hack back at least to let some light in first. Oh, wow, there we go. That really has brightened everything up, hasn't it, Aon? There we go. That's realistic of what it is. Um, the background there, you can see sort of plant die off. That's the pearl weed. Well, if there's not getting any light, it's gonna do that. But it, it goes back green very quickly when all the new shoots start coming. I've left this side because, to be honest, I want to change this soon. It's a bit too sort of complicated for me to be able to manage. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm trying to get the breeding going. I want to be able to see the baby, see how they're progressing. A couple of days ago, I saw quite a few dotted about, but now I'm not seeing any. And I think that's just because, you know, I can't monitor it. I need to be able to see what's going on. I was going to take them out, but I couldn't get to them, etc. So I think if I just simplify it, not, not as much as... Uh, not as much as the new aquarium mind. I mean, I don't need to simplify it as much as this one by any means, but if I, I want I like the fact that this has got a single rock structure, which is what I could do. I could do like um, in the tank, say that's the 60 centimeter, one rock structure, not as big as that, maybe just a small one like that. And it just make it really easy for me to manage. So one good thing though, got, oh yeah, look, that's everything I took out. That is a big load of pearl weed and on the top was a salvinia as well, so yeah nice and clear now. It won't take long actually for it to start looking nice and green again. I'll leave it for a little bit to see what goes on and then I think it's time to do something like different. Similar to what I've done, but bring it all into the middle. I think it will look really cool with like all those prongs coming out. And it's good to know that I can actually get the, uh, the dwarf hair grass to carpet and everything. Cause look, even on the areas where they just keep digging up, it's still, it's still 
well, carpeting really. You wouldn't call it a carpet, sorry, but you know, it's, it's spreading and it looks very healthy and good. So that's good to know. Yeah, so we have got options. I mean, next time I won't do the whole mixed substrate thing because it, it just looks a mess, doesn't it? <laughs> but yeah, the tank overall though, is super healthy. But what about the fish? Okay, there is the female crib. She is looking really good. So her belly has gone all really pink again. She's going back in the cave. Like I said, I hadn't seen her for a long time and then she just appeared out of nowhere. There's the male. Oh, where's he going? Where are you going, fella? But yeah, they're definitely getting ready to spawn again. So do I change it now? I think I should change it sooner rather than later because otherwise I'm going to be disturbing anything that's going on down in that cave. And then I can give them a chance to create a new cave, can't I? Bye. Goodbye. Don't look at me. I'm shy. <laughs> Sorry. Well, I thought I got all of these guys out, but I guess this one must have been hiding. I, I, I couldn't find any more, to be honest. Wow, well done, fella. Good hiding. I took a lot of them back, you see, because I was worried about them eating the babies. Maybe that's the one that's been eating the babies because I can't see any anymore. And then the next tank that we need to sort out is the Epistogramma Hung Schloi tank behind me. There's a lot of plants in there now, way too many, and because of that, the flow's been disrupted. Now that leads to algae. Not always, but in this case it has. And to be honest, I think this is because the stocking levels, there's quite a few fish in here actually, especially when we've got the new babies coming in there as well. They are in there, I've seen them today. I can't see them now. I think the first job is just to clear off all the algae that's on the glass. So you see, you can see that all that algae there. We're getting some algae in some areas that are getting zero flow. So down the bottom here, there's loads and also caught up in the moss. Moss can be a stickler for getting um, algae in it because it stops flow, doesn't it? Now, all we've got is our little hang on the back filter, which puts that trickle in. Well, it's very easily going to block the flow. So it was looking pretty decent. It's just that, you know, I've left it for a couple of weeks now. And this is what happens if you don't keep up on your maintenance. Even a little bit of maintenance, like, you know, a partial water change. Oh, there's the female. Oh, she's just gone back in. And there's the mouth. Let me get this glass clean and I can show you the fish properly. The fish are absolutely gorgeous in this tank. Right, we're a bit of a mess at the moment, but currently I've taken off a load of the moss at the back there and there. I've taken out the... Ludwigia super red and replanted it lower. I've cut it all off from this section because it was growing up so high. I'm going to replant it so it's not so high. Hacked off some of the moss so far. I need to take out this whole section as well because it's just going to grow back way too quickly otherwise. Not take it out, but you know, cut it right back. Now the uh, Amazon sword is just doing insane. I think I'm just going to leave that. It grows so slowly and looks so beautiful that I think it would be sacrilege to sort of hack that off. There's some there's some remnants of algae on the edges. You see that white fluffy edge? That's where there obviously was some algae, but it's balanced. The tank's balanced out and that's died off. So that's cool. So the tank is balanced. It's just overgrown and the reds are nicely red. So I know we're doing well likewise. Yeah, it's just a case now of continuing the process, cutting back what we can, big water change, and I need to get up, up all this um, algae on the base here as well. I can just wave at that when I do a water change. That will suck it all up. Awesome. Okay, we're already looking great. The water is massively oxygenated. Look at that epistogramma there, the Hung Shloi. That's the male. Many of you know that already, but looking so, so good, isn't he? Let me just turn exposure up. There we go. Look at that. So stunning. That's his actual colours. That's that's how I'm seeing it right now. Such a stunning little fish, isn't it? And I even love the female, to be honest, as well. Female, where are you? But yeah, you can look, look at the amount of bubbles coming off of the um, the Amazon saw plant here. Some of that will actually be from the oxygen in the water, but some of it will be just like the leaves producing it as well because they've been exposed to the CO2 when I drained the water level right down. Anubius looking st stupidly healthy as well, which is cool. I mean, I was a bit worried about it because it's being covered up by all that moss, but underneath it's looking great. We've got some new leaves there as well. Um, 
<laughs> the autos all, all going around together, look, as they should be, like a full school. They're stunners, look. In a big group, autos are really, really cool. They're always grouped together as well. Oh, nice little snail getting to work. Nice job, buddy. Oh yeah, and I trimmed the Ludwigia up right back and planted it back in because it was up high. So, you know, I've actually, it's got more there now because where I trimmed it, I just replanted it, but you've still got the tops of where it was trimmed and yeah, it's looking really good, that nice red area. It will look better than this in a couple of days after it's sort of, I don't know, after a big trim, things can go a little bit sort of bad with the plants. Not bad, but they look a little bit sorry for themselves. And then in a couple of days, everything picks itself up again. A few shoots start sh starting to show on the on the fast growing stems and that. Yeah, it should look good in a couple of days. I mean, not that it looks bad now. I really like what's going on there. It's like a it's like a little freshwater reef tank, isn't it? And I also cleared the front glass as well. I run a card down the front just to take away all that sort of griminess that collects on that area. So yeah, really happy with the tank looking great so we've got two tanks sorted out already i mean this one isn't like special but it it looks 10 times better already doesn't it <laughs> all three in a row now and then obviously the ecosystem creme behind me i did a big trim up session on that not too long ago so that's all doing well it's still only had like two water changes since i set it up which was a couple of months ago now but it doesn't need it it's really good i tested the water as well and it's all good i mean i tested like TDS, which tells me the total dissolved solids in the water, which comes out just about 120, something like that, which is what I like to aim for for most of my planted tanks. But yeah, the plants are growing absolutely great. The ones that I trimmed off are already back to the top again. Yeah, <laughs> I did tell you guys this would happen. So look, I just trimmed all of these stems here down low. So they were like across, the, why am I doing that? <laughs> across like that area where that stick is, stick, tree, uh, log, wood. Where that bit of wood, designer wood, is in the background, they've already grown above it. That's like less than a week. So I'm going to have to get in there, trim those, and put them back in that corner. Again, I'm trying to fill it out from that side because everything tries to sweep that way because of the way that the... Uh, the way the water flows around there from the canister, not canister filter, internal filter. On this side, this is the only pearl weed in this tank and uh, it's already going nuts again. So I'm gonna get right on top of that because I don't want the same situation we've had in lots of other tanks. Fish wise, the epistogramma that we put in here before, look, doing so good. This is the uh, the male. This is the vieja. The other epistogramma in the other tank was the hung slaw, remember? They're actually quite a bit different. Well, not quite a bit, but they are different. And then down here, look, next to, is the female which is awesome because they were staying separate but they seem to be getting along really well in this bottom section again hopefully that means that we can have some babies as someone said that the predators will have babies that will eat the endler babies <laughs> i mean the population doesn't seem to be being touched to be honest i think i need even more fish in this tank if you look down here though you can see all this waste in the foreground that's from all the wood and all the plecos or br sorry br bristle nose chewing away at it i've got some nice amanos getting to work as well there let me see if i can see any of the bristle nose and there's one right on the back glass you okay back there buddy <laughs> yep yeah, fine just taking center stage <laughs> oh bye Right, that's this side taken care of. I've also cut the, the pearl weed out as well. You can see all that in there. But now we've got a little bit of a problem on the surface. The duck weed is starting to take over. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> Okay, we're back to looking great again. Now this is a tough one. This this tank is growing so, so fast. It started off quite slow because I think right down the bottom when I first planted, the light was struggling to get down there. But once we got to this sort of midway point, it's just going nuts. Like within every, I don't know, less than a week, I'm needing to trim it back. But it's good because it's creating that really thick, dense look, isn't it? I really, I'm really enjoying the tank now. I've got to go right in to be able to see cool stuff. Like if I zoom right in here, look, you can just see at the background, there's something else going on. We've got some Amano shrimp collecting on, on that, all that mulm that's in the bottom there. Stir that up for me, guys. And then you sweep back. Look, come over here, right in the background there. There's an epistogramma. Yeah, so he's just wondering what on earth just happened because I've obviously trimmed up all the plants in that back section. So to him, it all looks different now all of a sudden. And then here's the female just on the sort of rock right in front of him. They seem to be over in this area a lot more now. So I'm hoping that they're going to start breeding soon. That'd be wicked for the tank, wouldn't it? Baby Epistos, baby Endlers. Awesome. The Epistos seem to have settled in really, really well now in this tank. I mean, just look at the colours of this uh, Vieja and the female as well. But although she's shaded at the moment, so her colours aren't popping quite as good. But 
they're there as well. Now, one plant that I do often struggle with is the Trident Fern. Eight out of 10 times for me, it doesn't do too well. It doesn't do bad, but it doesn't like thrive and grow. But it's grown in this tank, which is great. So I've got Trident Fern pieces there, there, and down in there. You can just see it poking through there. Now, if you look at this one in the center here, we're getting loads of sort of nice new bright green um, leaves coming off. So the brightest stuff is all brand new. And you can see the tip of that plant there, look, is like where it's been new growth. Now, quite often nothing happens. They just go in there, they don't die, they just stay the same. This one actually sort of started dying back and you can see that because at the bottom there, look, it's all a bit weird. But then again, all new growth coming through. This is gonna be awesome. Hopefully I get a nice big piece in that section. You can already see some baby ones trying to grow off as well, which is great. I'll take them off when they get a little bit bigger and reattach them, maybe maybe bring it along this wood as well. That'd look really cool, wouldn't it? So yeah, the future's bright for this tank, that's for sure. Oh, right in the foreground. Look at you. Colors just massively popsy against all that green. Absolutely love it. Nice one. Shh, we must be quiet. Look, Ember is sleeping. Watch this as we come closer. Hello, Ember. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, on to Ember's tank. Everything here is doing really, really good, actually. There's quite a bit of, like, sort of this fluff algae, but it's from a new setup, you know. You get a little bit of diatoms as well we've got on some of the plants, like, look at those crypts there. You can see a little bit of diatoms on those leaves. But overall, I'm really happy. I need to trim that moss flat, back to that moss flat again, so it all stays on the rocks. <laughs> You're so adorable. Um, Ember's got a little thing on his back um, fin, not that side, the other side. He's had it for about nine months. Nine months ago, it went sort of bad and it and it and it needed treatment, so I treated it. And as a result now, it's kind of like a little hernia, if you like. It stays as it is there. It doesn't seem to bother him at all. And um, yeah, it's, it's just how it is. Might not have seen it in other shots because I don't normally get as much light on it. But yeah, it doesn't seem to bother Ember, that thing on the back there. I treated it with some of this, uh, is it methanol blue or something like that? It's, uh, anyway, some sort of treatment. I, when I first treated it, this was like, again, nine months ago now, and I put my, put this treatment stuff on a, on a cotton wool bud and applied it directly to the wound out of water, and it cleared it all up nicely. So, yeah, it just, it just is a little bit of a hernia now, if you like, on his little fin there. But it doesn't seem to bother him. He still uses that, that fin fine, and he swims absolutely brilliantly, as you can see as well. So it's not going to let it bother you, are we? No, no we're not, I'm not, not bothered. <laughs> waggle waggle. <laughs> so yeah, what we're gonna do for this tank, so some of the back plants that come out of the way. <laughs> some of the back plants there, like this one there, this is the, um, what is it, it's like, it's not pearl weed, it's Micranthium umbrusulum, I'll put it up on the screen. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so also we had a little bit of melt on these Ludwigias, so the bottom side, look, see all the leaves are gone? I've got no idea why, because the same plants this side, no problem at all, and look absolutely great, so it's one of those things, just gotta deal with it. But yeah, tank looks great, just needs a little trim up, water change, and yeah, that's it really. So guys, these razor scrapers here are really good, but they can be a bit tough to get into the corner sort of areas. Oh, I'll leave a link to these in the description because quite a few people ask what it is and where I get it from. So yeah, it's really cheap actually. It's like essential tool for anyone who's like aquascaping or fish tanks in general, to be honest. Um, but it does leave grime in corners because obviously it doesn't go right up to the edges. <laughs> and that is where the toothbrush comes really in handy. Look at that, look and get right in those corners because if you're gonna clean the glass, you need to do it properly. Don't forget those corners. Instantly, it has such a better effect on the whole tank when you've got perfect seams. Seams, edges, corners, whatever. <laughs> and then obviously we've got some on the rocks as well. So like, see those little tiny green patches? Well, they're pretty good at the moment because they're not getting out of hand, but we've got to keep on top of them, otherwise it will go bad. And again, the toothbrush is the perfect tool for this job. Look at that, it just gets it all off nice and easy. It looked like it had been on there for years and it comes straight off. But if you do leave it to build up, it's not as easy to get off as it is now. So it's really worth just getting in there once a week or every other week. This is probably, this is probably two weeks ago I did this actually. So yeah, every other week and, and just getting in there and having a good clean really does make a good difference.
Well, I use the toothbrush on this tank in particular, a big goldfish tank, because I don't have a cleanup crew. So, you know, on the ecosystem aquarium, there's loads of Amano shrimp, so they take care of all the rocks for me. But on here, there's nothing really to eat it. I mean, goldfish do eat algae, but they eat it in like the big stringy forms of it, not tiny little patches on your rock. I mean, we're being quite particular here, aren't we, to be honest? But the rocks do look better when they're properly gray in this scape, I think, anyway. Some rocks look really good with that green tinge to them. That leads me nicely over onto the new African Cichlid Aquarium. So yeah, the African Cichlid Tank is my most brand new setup. I'm absolutely loving it so far. This is so brand new to me, but it's it feels like, for a very brief spell, I had a reef tank. It wasn't like anything spectacular. I tried to do it low budget. I enjoyed it and I enjoyed the process for a few months, but I found that nothing really changed because obviously growth in a coral aquarium is very slow. But what I really did like about that setup was the fish. The fish were amazing. And these African cichlids massively remind me of the fish that I had then. I had a couple of clowns. Um, I, don't, I don't even know the rest of them actually. I don't know the names of all the sea fish. Uh, marine fish, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, anyway, so far, so good. If we take a look down here, none of the plants have been uprooted yet. <laughs> We're not in the woods yet, but uh, it's the sort of plants that grab hold quite quickly, the sages. They get root systems really quickly as well, so that is awesome. Now, if we can start getting some runners to go across, they'll actually sort of anchor all the plants down and we'll be, we'll be away, I think, because they'll grow faster than the cichlids will actually tear them up. Some of you also said the shellies are gonna completely overwhelm this middle area, take all the sand out, do whatever they want, expose the styrofoam or polystyrene. That's exactly what they have done, you were right. So I'll probably put like another rock down in that section, move the shellies out a bit. I'm still waiting for Amazon to turn up with my shells, come on. <laughs> We're gonna have a lot more here because you guys are right, we need a lot more. I'm gonna probably bring them around this section and maybe a few at this front front gap as well. Again, it's a bit more polystyrene showing there where they've tried to dig, but I can uh, I can put another rock in that area as well. It's gonna be some getting used to this whole thing. It's gonna be some working it out, working out what the guys are doing, the guys, the fish are doing in there. This cave is awesome because it's just one that goes all the way through. Can we see the gap? No, we can't, but it goes all the way through. So there's like a whole internal cave inside of that structure. Now the fairy cichlid was just hanging out in that one, but I think eventually it went over here and went, <laughs> it said, this is much better for me in here. So it's now taken residence in this whole cave. But I do hear what quite a lot of you were saying. Uh, maybe we need some more rocks, we need some more structures, some more caves. So I might, in fact, just bring another little section out here with a few piles just on top. So we've got another area just for them all to go in. They're really, really starting to open up a bit more now and get a bit more comfortable with the environment. I mean, look, it's just swimming everywhere. Before they're staying so close to the rocks, but now they're coming out, oh, very cichlid again. Yeah, so, so cool, great to see. But one really cool thing that I did want to happen was I wanted to get like a really good strong amount of algae on the rocks. Now that sounds like, what? You want algae on your rocks? Something about these kind of scapes where a big load of green algae on those rocks where the lights blasted them, just looks so, so good. And you can see we're already starting to generate that, which isn't surprising because look, the light's right there blasting straight on it. Now I've turned down the, uh, the ISO on the camera which is the light intensity, because it actually looks like mm, a little bit less. Yeah. Somewhere in between those two is what it actually looks like. So if you just turn it down a little bit so you can get a bit more detail. There you go, look, the fish are on there. So all these green parts are gonna to continue to you know, get green. And it'll probably try and do it on the substrate as well and the glass, but obviously you can stir up the substrate, you can wipe down the glass, which means that the only like proper vibrant green bits left should be on the rocks, which is gonna look so good, isn't it? Imagine that, like it looked like proper natural, I think anyway. Anyway guys, that's enough of an update today. I hope you've enjoyed this one. If you did, hit the like and subscribe button. Hopefully if you enjoyed this kind of thing, we could do this more often. Like, you know, I could just go around all the tanks, like sorting them out, showing them off, that sort of thing. I enjoy it, hopefully you do too. See you next time.